Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Everything House Music and More. And my special guest today is the one and only Danny, Sweet D. Wilson. Danny, what's going on, brother? What's up, bro? It's all good. <laughs> Glad to be here. How you been, man? I'm hanging, man. Okay. So life is good. I'm good, still good. breathing. That's all right. Up. So can we get into it then? Let's do it. All right. So Danny, how did you get started in music and were you in any bands coming up? Oh, wow. Let me tell you. I've been a lover of music since I was a kid. My grandmother had an organ in her living room. Yeah. That was my first introduction to music. Okay. I used to get on that little organ and play and play and play, uh, emulate what I would hear on the radio as a kid. Uh, then I became involved with bands. Uh, I went to Corliss High School. When I got in high school, okay. I joined the band. Okay. Uh, when I joined that band, it was uh, kind of ironic that uh, – I met uh, Richard Patterson, who became my partner. Richard in music. Patterson, right? Now yeah. he's he's the vocalist, correct? Right on okay. my on my Full House record. Communicate. Oh, okay, right, right, right. Yeah, so okay. I met Richard Patterson in high school. Okay, uh, we had a band. It was right. called the Showdown Band. Showdown Band. And the Showdown Band. If you were from Chicago, you should know that there was a white uh, disc jockey on WGCI mornings. Okay. okay, and his name was Bob Wall. Bob Wall, yeah. Bob Wall had a band called the Wall Notes. Get out of here. That was my band. Get out of here. <laughs> okay. So I played with Bob in the wall notes. So was you the music director? I or? was the leader of the band. Okay. To say that. So, okay. I, yeah. And so, you play, as people don't know, you, you play keyboards? Keys. Saxophone was oh. my main instrument. Though. Okay. I'm self-taught on keys. Okay. But I studied for saxophone. I know how to read music for saxophone. Okay. All of that. I played nice. in the Chicago All City Band. Oh, nice. All City Jazz. Man, Danny, I did, I did not know that, brother. Yeah, so I'm a real musician. There's okay. No, no, yes, yes, yes. You know, no fake stuff going on. But to make the, uh, finish that story, though, okay. I started with that band, the right. Showdown Band, and as a backup band for a backup, you know, we were a backup group for Bob Wall, the morning right. man on WGCI. Right. And uh, it, it evolved from there because that band was integral in bringing me into house music. Oh, wow. And the reason I say that is uh, Keith Nunnally. Keith Nunnally, yeah. Was a member of that band. Oh, really? Okay. Man. So Peter Black. Peter Black, rest in peace. Yes, yes. was a member of that band. Right. Uh, and we had some other members that went on to do some big time things as well. Okay. Uh, but Keith Nunnally, after he sung, uh, what was it? Music is the key? Music is key, right. Yeah. Steve Hurley. With Steve JM Hurley. Silk, right. That was my introduction to coming into house music because Keith brought me the song and he let he played it for me. Right. And I'm like, oh man, we can do something like that. Okay. So that was that was my next question. When did you get introduced to house music? Yeah. So that's that's when James Silk did music is the key. Right. And okay. after that, you know, their second release was Shadows of Your Love. Right. Shadows of Your Love was a song that I created with Keith and Peter Black. Get out of here. Uh I hate to say, but you know. I lost producers' credits on it because they went to Steve Hurley. Right, 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 right. But so honestly, the original, so so when okay, so you did that the whole record. Shadows. We in. did that in my mom's basement at my okay. mom's house. Right. Me and Keith. Right. We started it off. We got it all together. I even played the drums live. That's why I kind of sound. If you listen to that song, wow. I had some Simmons drums. Those were electronic drums. Yeah. I played them live. Okay. And I recorded them on a Tascam four track. Yeah. Okay. And. Um, we created the song. Okay. Pete came later, and right. Pete kind of added the intro part to it okay. and all that. Yeah. We recorded everything onto this Tascam 4 track. Wow. So after we were done, Keith left left my house right. and went over and took it to Steve. Steve heard it, and he was like, oh, wow. Oh, yeah, let's put that out. Let's do this. Wow. And then he so, took it note for note. So it did, didn't did change you, anything. Oh, really? And programmed it into a sequencer, and all of a sudden. Wow. I didn't. I was so, a keyboard player. So you never get writer's credit for it or anything. No, I was. Wow. I was put on the record as a keyboard player. Wow. But I actually made it. You made, I made right. you wrote the, the record. Line. I made the keyboard. So Keith parts. never told told uh, told Steve Hurley that or anything. Uh, Keith knew he was there. Right, but he didn't say <laughs> nothing. And and Hurley knew he wasn't there. Wow. You know, and and Pete, if rest in peace, if he was here, he could tell you right. he was there. Wow. Uh, but I will say. Steve wasn't there. It was uh, brought up that me and Pete would be members of J.M. Silk. Now, who, who said that? That was Rocky Jones told us we're going to be members of J.M. Silk. Oh, wow. Okay. So we talked about it. We were like, okay, well, that's cool. Me and Pete felt good about it. Right. Uh, I guess Keith was on board. I don't know if he was or not. Okay. But uh, at the time, I guess Keith had management. 
and his management wasn't feeling that. Oh wow! And that was. A, and you somebody, remember his management? Phil and Frank. Phil and Frank, yeah. Rodrigo or something yeah, like yeah, that. Frank I can't Rodrigo, remember. yeah. Yeah, those were his managers. Oh, wow. And uh, they weren't having it. They, you know, they're like, nah. But they took us so far as to when they did, they did a video for that song. Right. Uh, we were at the video shoot, and we waiting around, and we like waiting for our chance to be in the video. Right. You know, me and Pete. Yeah. Sat there all day. Then get in there. Finally, they said, okay, come on, we're going to put you in the scene. They did the scene. It was some garbage because it never made it. They cut it, and it never even made it on the video. Wow. Okay? So we're thinking to ourselves, well, wait a minute. What happened? We thought we were going to be members of this group. Yeah. Now, how are you cutting us out uh, out of the video? Right. You know? Right. But uh, it just never transpired. It okay. was promised to us that we would be members of Jam Silk. Right. But it never happened. Wow. Yeah, that's that's that's, and I'm not like I said, I'm not salty. Hey, it is what it is. Yeah, and I seen uh, uh, Steve, right? And we talked about it. He said that was his management, it wasn't him, right? Okay, well, if that's the case, that's the case, yeah, you know. Okay, uh, I will say though, they work for you, right? Yeah, I don't know. Well, that's part (laughs) of history right there, brother. I didn't know that at all, man. Yeah, wow. So, so, so what was your your first thoughts about house music when when you heard it? It was different, man. Okay. I used to hear this sound. I'm like, you know, because the mixes would come on, you know, right. and the hot lunch mix was a hot right. thing back in the in the 80s and right. stuff. Uh, and you hear this stuff and you're like, wow, this is different. I kind of right. like it. It was raw yeah. and different. But just totally different from yeah. where you came from. And it was this guy I used to hear. Okay. Okay. And every time he did it, I said, oh, it was just a stroke of luck. He ain't going to do it again. Right. And he did it again. And what was that? And, his name was Chippy. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, he kept putting out these cuts. And I'm like, man, this dude is pretty good. So so people, all right, so Danny, so a lot of people don't know, like, your, your background. So what was the first record you played on, and how did it come about besides, you know, you did The Shadows You Love? But what was your, like, first record that people was like, I want you to play on this? That was actually, well, you can't count the stuff I did with Bob Wall, because that was like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm talking about for the house music side, though. The house music yeah. side was. Shadows of Your Love. Shadow, that was the first record. That was the very first one. What happened, like I said, Keith was a member of my band. Right. And then after he sung uh, uh, Music yeah. in the Key, we made Shadows of Your Love. And from there, that was when it snowballed because I met everybody else okay. in the game because he right. took me down to DJ International. Right. Met the people down there. Right. And I met the people over at Tracks Records. Yeah. And then I started meeting other artists. Right, and right, it right. just snowballed. So your, 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 your approach to Keys all the time was a little different for house music. So did you adapt to playing house like after you heard it and everything? After I heard, let me tell you my very first experience hearing it though. Okay. Uh, a girlfriend, a girl I was dating at the time. Right. Back, this was. Ooh, I'm sorry. No problem. This was uh way back. Yeah. She had a little birthday party, right? Okay. Uh, I don't remember who the DJ was at this birthday party. It was right. a basement party. You know, back in the day, we used to do basement yeah, yeah, parties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. charge about a quarter, 50 cents to get in. <laughs> On okay. the index card. Right. Right, <laughs> right, okay. right, right, right. Uh, but yeah, she had this little basement party. Okay. And they put on this track. And I'm like, I had never heard it before. Right. right? And I noticed the crowd all of a sudden went crazy. Yeah. And then they started doing what the track was doing. And uh, everybody at the party was... Right. And I'm like, what is this? The 119 track. <laughs> it was the 119 clap, track. Clap, 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 and right. that was my first introduction to it. Okay. You know, even though I did go to Mendel and I went to the Mendel parties right. and stuff like okay. that. Okay. What year did you graduate? I graduated high school in 82. Okay. Okay. So you're a little older. You old school then. A little bit. I don't <laughs> tell nobody. <laughs> so how often were you in the studio those days and did you do pre-production at first? So what we did back then. Right. Some of that stuff was made at at home. And right. somebody, you know, some people always want to say house music got the name from being made at home. I don't agree with that. Okay. But, you know. So, I okay. There. So, hold on. So, <laughs> in your perspective, where do you think the term house music came from? House music came from the warehouse. Okay. In my, in in your, my opinion. Correct. Okay. Right. Now, I've talked to some people who are supposedly house music uh, prima donnas and right. echelon and stuff, <laughs> and they say, you know, no, it came from somebody's house basement, basement. all that stuff. Yeah, but I just don't agree. Absolutely, 
I get know. you on that. Yeah. Right. Uh, it was at the house. Okay. People shortening. You know how we are as people. Yeah. You know what we do. We It wasn't Mickey D's and back in the day. It was McDonald's. Right, right, right. You know, right. we exactly. made it Mickey D's. It exactly. wasn't sliders back in the Absolutely. day. Absolutely. It, it was, was White, White Castle. Castles. Right. We we have a tendency to change names of things. Yeah. And we took that little name of Warehouse and shortened yeah. it to House. Okay, so the credits didn't always make it on the record all the time, man. Give us a list of some of the top ones that didn't make it on there that your credit should have been on there. Wow. I did one with uh, John Roker. Oh, really? Move. Get uh, out of here. Yeah, that's me on the keys, but somehow I got left off of it. Working on that track. Okay, so what are the records? Come on now, spill the tea, man. Oh, man, I, I can't think of them all because um, it was so many. Right, I right, play, right. You know, I came in this thing with a mentality of from, from coming from band. Yeah. When you're in a band, everybody works together. And we right. all feel like if I help you, it's going to make us all come up together. Absolutely. But when I got in this business, I realized the business ain't that way. Right. Uh, but I was trying to help everybody. I was playing on anybody I could stuff, trying to help them out. Because I, I see you played on a lot of Farley Jack Master Fun. A lot of Farley stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So did you ever get all the credit for that? Not every track. Okay. Sometimes my name just didn't appear. So, so people don't understand, like... What were some top tracks of Farley's that you played on? I can't recall. Okay. Um, let me just start by explaining why I can't remember a lot of the tracks that I played on. Okay. Uh, the reason being, uh, let's take Farley, for instance. He was good for having me come to the studio. Okay. We'll start a track. Right. And then he'll be like, eh, that's enough. And he'll, I guess, because he had me there. Right. You know, and I love him, but <laughs> I know what he was doing. <laughs> Thinking back, he was trying to get as much out of me as he as could man. while I was there. Okay. And that's why a lot of the tracks that I did, I don't even know that I did them. Because oh. we would start one, then he'll start stop one. it and right. throw that one to the side, and he'll start another one. Right. And then he'll stop it and go to another one and stop that one. Wow. And it turns out, and after he got so many, it was like, okay, yeah. cool, we done. And okay. then maybe weeks later, I start hearing these tracks coming out. And I don't even know that I had done it. Wow. You know, so that's how I was going down. Okay. But I was just trying to call myself helping people out. And like just getting the game you. right. Yeah. yeah. And okay. I thought maybe the people I would help would reach back. Right. And help me. Okay. Eh, didn't always fare out that way. Right. But it is what it is. But that's why I don't really, I can't really recall off the top of my head. Correct. Yeah. A lot of the tracks that I yeah. was involved with. So we'll, we'll, put, it, we'll them, put it on the screen and, and all the stuff that you did once you get back with me on yeah. there. Right. And, and me and Folly are cool. That's my brother. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. I love him because I, I have to say this about Folly. Yeah. He kind of got me on that stuff. That's right. cool. I'm over it. Yeah. Thing is, um, without him, you might have never heard of me Correct. because of what right. I was doing. Right, with him, right, right. You probably would have never heard Everything of me. Everything happens for a reason. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, that, that, oh my goodness. So, we know you were on Tracks Records. You did Thank You. Yeah. The remake of that. Mm -hmm. uh, can you elaborate on how that came about? So, that was me and Chip E, actually. Oh, really? Okay. okay. So, what happened was, and Chip didn't want his name on it for some reason. <laughs> right. He'll probably have to explain why. I can't remember, but he did give me an explanation. Right. But, what happened was I decided I'm going to try something. I'm going to try to do a solo venture, you know? Okay. And Because uh, I had been playing on everybody else's stuff. Right. Uh, and me and Chip got together. We put together that track and a couple of others that went on the B side of it. I yeah. can't remember what they were, but it, it was some, you know, just something to test the waters for me. Right, right. And I never really took it that seriously. Okay. And when I listened to it today, I kind of cringed because I'm like, did I really put that out there? But... <laughs> It, it was so. It, it was back then because it was so simple. Yeah, I, I know you come from a music background. You you, you want to yep. hear the changes, the the bridges, the yep. vamp out, all that other stuff. But this was something where you just took the original. Uh, you saved my day. Yep. and created a whole track around. I remember everybody playing it too back yep. in the day. Yep. So the thing was, I never expected it to be anything anyway. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna test the waters. Right. Put something out there. But that was a, a collaboration with Chip and okay. myself, and we went over the Soto sound. I think. Back in the day, he was a big guy in, in right. the recording industry, uh, Jerry Soto. Absolutely, right. Uh, he had a little setup in his garage or something. I can't yeah. remember how it was. Yeah. Uh, but it was a decent sound in there. Okay. And uh, that's where we went and did it. Yeah, the story. Chip probably going to get mad at me for this. Okay. But I'm only telling the truth. He knows it. Right. I know it. Right. And it is what it is. Uh, I did a track with a young lady. I can't remember the name of it, uh, but... It was on, supposed to be released on uh, DJ International. Okay. I used uh, Chip's 909. Right. 
So, you know, the 909, if you're familiar with it, you can program bass lines and things like Absolutely. that into it. Okay. Right. So I programmed my stuff in there, my beats and my bass line was programmed into the 909. Right. Uh, after I gave Chip back his 909, <laughs> Chip called me up. He said, hey, Danny, why don't you give me producer's credits on your record? Right. And I'm like thinking to myself, why, Chip? Right. Uh. He said, well, you use my equipment, you know, give me producer's credits. Right. I was like, no. Yeah. So he was like, okay. He hung up the phone. Right. About a week or two later, I get a call from him. Uh Uh-huh. Danny, I want you to hear a tune that was inspired by yours. So my beats, right. my bass line right. was still programmed. Because it was triggered in there. Right, 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 right. So he took it and built on it and changed things a little bit and did whatever he did. Right. And it became If You Only Knew. Get out of here. So he played it over the phone for me. Danny, this was a tune inspired by yours. Those were his exact words. So, so that because I remember it. that record because Liddell Townsend had part of that and he played on that record too. Probably did. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing was, it was inspired by mine. Wow. In Chip's words. And then I turned around and still played on the record. Uh, If you get the original uh, Wax, I think on the B-side somewhere, there's a saxophone (laughs) uh, part where I actually played saxophone on on If You Only Knew. Wow. Yeah. So uh, even though he... Got me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still turned around and still played on it. That's why he know I ain't salty about it. But hey, Chip, I'm only telling the truth, bro. There you go. That's your, that's your truth, brother. <laughs> Let me tell you about Adonis. <laughs> okay. I mean, I love the brother. He good. Adonis, uh, right. Adonis I ain't going to put him out there like that. Right. He a good guy. That's all I can say. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to leave that alone. No, go ahead, man. Take, speak your truth. It's your truth, brother. Now, he kind of tricked me out of some equipment. Okay. And I didn't like it, you right. know, but it is what it is. He yeah. got it and... It was that a lot of equipment? It was uh, not a lot, but it was something of value to me. Okay. You know, it was like hard to find, like to this day. You what know, was it? He's an acid guy, you know. So the TV 303 he got out of you? he got out of me. He asked to re- borrow it. He said, here, use this, and I'm going to take this 303. Right. And then he called me up. He wanted his stuff back, gave him his stuff back. And he said, well, I'll give you yours back, you know, later. Right. Five years went by. I never got my 303 back. Wow. And then when I did get it back, it didn't work. I opened it up. Kind of looked like he changed the insides. Wow. I, he took the shell and just put it back together with Damn, some bad Adonis. inside. <laughs> I don't know. You know, but I'm only telling the truth. Right, man. right, right, right. Hey, Adonis, love you, bro. <laughs> okay. Right. So so coming up on that era, man, because it was a lot of things happening at that time. Mm-hmm. Um, you must have went over to DJ International at that time too. Yeah. And, and did a lot of projects for them. Yeah. So can you go ahead and recall some things that you did with DJ International? Besides your own stuff though. Oh wow. I know they had me work with uh, a lot of their artists. Uh was Fem Fion, I can't yeah, they were they were DJ International. Right. I worked on the Fem Fem Fion track with right. Chip and, right. and Fem Fion. Okay. Um played on a Lolita Holloway track. Okay. Can't remember the title. Oh wow! Um, that was on DJ International, or I think so. If okay. I'm not mistaken, I gotta I, check that out. I'll put it yeah. inside the, the 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 comments down there. Yeah. Um. I know. Um. What else did I do at DJ? I. I it's kind of a blur because I was doing <laughs> so much, man. And so basically, a, a lot of things that. You, that DJ International came out, you probably put your, your touches on there. I played with some of everybody because I was just trying to help everybody. Right. And, you know, Rocky was helping me help everybody. Right. Uh, yeah, in case you don't know Rocky, Rocky was... Rocky Jones. Rocky yeah. Jones, uh, right. the, the owner the, of... Owner DJ National. Uh, he was helping me help everybody. So he would say, hey, Danny, come on and put something on this track. And, right. And I would do it. You okay. know? And then sometimes I would hear things... And forget that I had done it. Right. You know, and when I hear it, I'm like, oh, that sounds kind of familiar. Yeah. And it turns out it was me. Wow. <laughs> you know. So so bring us to the point of, now, I, I remember this, man. I Because rem- I, I, I was back in the day, you also read credits all the time on the records. Mm-hmm. Um, Full House. Yeah. When y'all did communicate. Yeah. Take us to the process of that, brother. All right. Let me tell you where it started. Okay. Colonel Abrams. Colonel Abrams. Okay. I was going to ask you something because... Some of the streamlines in there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, go ahead. That go ahead. That was a major influence. Okay. And let me tell you how. Now, which Colonel Abrams was the major influence for? Uh, was it music is the answer? Music is the answer. Yep. Yep. Okay. So what happened was we heard as if, and if you listen to 
Music is the answer. There's a line in there. Right. Where he says, communicate before it gets too late. Oh, wow. I'm sure you heard it, yes, right? I remember that. Yeah. That's where we got communicate. We took that one word. Okay. And and we went on and made a, a track similar to uh, what his style right, of, right. of house now, was. Now, you and uh, your partner at the time wrote that record together, or you, did you write it for yourself? No, me and him wrote it together. So that was Richard Patterson. Richard Patterson. And right. Richard just passed about a year or two okay, ago. Rest in peace. Yeah, so right. uh, man, I miss my brother. Yeah. But uh, yeah, uh, me and Richard did that song together. Right. And we wrote that together. So take us to the process, man, because this was huge, and people have to understand what was going on at the time. Mm-hmm. House, the house scene was just booming. Mm-hmm. You got the hot mix five, you know. You got everybody's got a mix show now. Everybody's playing house music. This record got on radio. Yep. WGCI. Yep. You know, was playing it constantly. Went in rotation. Went in rotation. One of the few house records that did. That. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Now take us to the process of that. So what happened was our mindset at that time was we going to make a record that can kind of go both ways, like right. Colonel Abrams was doing yeah. at the time. Because it, it is kind of commercial. Yeah. Slash underground. If you take the bass line and everything, right. Yeah. So we wanted to make something R&B-ish, but kind of club-ish as well. Right. And that's what our mindset was when we were doing it. And our main uh, uh, mold for following yeah. was The Trap by Colonel Abrams. By Colonel Abrams. Yeah, because right. we liked the way it had the R&B feel, but it was still a club record. Yeah. And that's what we were trying to recreate, that same kind of thing. Wow. Uh, we wanted the airplay, and we weren't the first uh, house. I don't want to never claim I was the first. Right, I right, wasn't right. the first nothing, so nobody can't come at me. No, I, I think be, it's, it's got to be between like this uh, 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 girl if only you knew. Mm-hmm. With Chippy and yourself, I be I think that was almost like the same time. And I'm gonna tell you another records. group that kind of got signed because we weren't the first. Yeah, we weren't the first knew. to get signed with a major right uh, record label because we were signed with CBS Epic. Right. Uh, I believe if I, I could be wrong, I don't know. Right. But I think Ten City might have been the first. I'm not sure. But Atlantic, uh, that that could be. You know, yeah, possibly. I'm not sure. But I I, I remember you guys specifically because it was Epic. It could have been you or Lil Lewis too at the same time. I forgot about yeah. Lewis. Yeah. But um, I believe you. But I'm just saying that record was huge, man. Because they hear that on the radio in rotation, man. Yeah. It was something big. And that was big for us because now we're hearing ourselves in radio rotation. Right. And at the parties. Yeah. It was kind of a fun thing. Now, if you look at the credits on there, Farley is, I believe, the he was the um, the mix on that, correct? He did a mix. Okay. Bad Boy Bill did a mix. Okay. Uh, who else did a mix? I think, um, uh, was it Shep? Shep Pettibone. Petty so how did that record come from the underground to, to, to Epic? How did that process go? So, actually, I guess Rocky had something to do with that. Okay. Uh, from what I was told, you know, they heard the record. Right. They had a little interest in it. They wanted to pick it up. Right. And they picked it up. Okay. And Rocky sold them, you know, or leased it to him or whatever. Yeah. And that's how that <laughs> Leased about. it to him, huh? Yeah, because I know he didn't <laughs> let it go. <laughs> so, at that time, did you go out and do any shows overseas or any anywhere out the state? Let me tell you. That was one of the funnest times of my life. I okay. got to travel the world. Wow. You know, and uh, I, if anything that I can say came great out of this house music thing, yeah, it gave me the chance to travel to places I probably would have never went to wow. if I hadn't done so did, it. So on that record, did you do Top of the Pops or anything? We did Top of the Pops. Okay. We did uh, a lot of the shows over there in England. We went right. to Sweden, Amsterdam. We right. were all over just touring because wow. we was. that's another thing a lot of people don't know. Yeah. I was on those first couple of house music tours that went out. Oh, really? You know, so I was on the tour when DJ International went over there. And I was right. on the tour when Trax Records went over there as well. Okay. So I was over there with Adonis and Marshall. Oh, and, Curtis and, and everybody. And Kurt and Fingers Inc. And really? I was over there with those guys wow. on those tours. That's nice. Yeah. Kurt, Kevin Irvin. Kev- Kevin Irvin, Curve, yeah, right. Yep. All right. So do you feel like House evolved into more sophisticated arrangements? It's gotten away from the sound that you started with at first? Definitely. Yeah. Uh, it's gotten to be, I'll put it this way. It was raw back in the day. Right. I mean, when I say raw, yeah. it was sometimes just a drum track. Right. And somebody sampling something yeah. and, and repeating it. Yeah. Now it has evolved way further than what it used to be. And now it takes some musicianship now. Absolutely. And that's pretty good, though. I kind of like yeah, it. Yeah, you yeah. know, I, I like it. But 
what made it stand out was how raw it was back in the day. Absolutely. You know, because disco had all those instruments. Yeah. You we know? just broke it down from the disco element, just made it raw for us to create the house sound. Exactly. But you know? uh, it has evolved. Right. Definitely. Now you got bands and everything yeah. in house music. You got real guitars. Right, and right, real, right. Strings, you didn't have everything. That back yeah. in the day. Right. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. So how has house, house music changed your life, brother? Uh, I will say it gave me the chance to travel the world, like I said. Right. Um, and it took me to a major record deal. That's nice. Who, now, how many people can say that? You know, I'm sorry to interject, but right there, the major label. Did you guys create an album for Epic at the time? So it wasn't an album deal. It was a well. Let me just rephrase that. Okay. It was prospectively an album deal, right? Based on sales from the gotcha. single. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, I don't know what was going on back then. We were kids, man. Right. We were young. I was in my twenties. Okay. Somehow money wasn't going where it should have been going because it definitely wasn't coming to my pockets. Wow. Okay. Okay. But uh, it was contingent upon how many sales that it sold, the right. single sold. Correct. And then maybe we'll move on to an album. Okay. It never got that far. Oh, so you don't know how much it sold? I don't first know run. how much it sold. Okay. And to be honest, don't know where my royalties are. So, oh my goodness. So you never got royalties on that record? Never got royalty. Oh, come on, Danny. We got to get, we got to look into that. I one. know. Okay. I know, and uh, that's not only that's not the only one. A lot of the tracks, record stuff, right? Yeah, nothing. Not oh well, we know that is Larry, and we know what happened. Yeah, with that. and 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 the other. I don't know what the deal is. I know somebody else took over tracks. Yeah, and I don't know what they're doing. Right, but right. that's screaming Rachel nothing. that took yeah, over. There yeah. you go. I yeah, wasn't yeah. gonna call. Names, oh no, that, it is what it is. But uh, I haven't seen nothing. And if you want to do right, hey, right. Then you can Absolutely, do right. you've been in this game too long, brother. So yeah, you know, and that's what I, I'm paying homage to you, man. Because, like I say, you are one of the pioneers. You was at, you was there from the beginning. Thank um, you, you you started this. You you had a record that was on radio and rotation, man. Which that's part of history, right there. Yeah, yeah. you know, and it wasn't like a, a flute record because I love that record, man. I, I okay, I was playing that record, man, back in my sets back in the day, man. Really? So, okay, yeah. Cool. So I was like. These guys, full house. I gotta meet them, man. Yeah, yeah. It was fun, man. Yeah. And let me say this too. You know, you got uh, some people who really don't even want to acknowledge that I was there, but I was there. Oh, absolutely. The records show it. The, but the that's footage, that's why know. I like to do this this podcast, man, so people know and see a face with that name. Mm -hmm. So the Danny Sweet D Wilson, they'd be like, "Oh, that's who that is." Mm -hmm. Um, because if you go back, you would look at the credits, you would see Danny name there from the beginning. Yeah, and yeah. that's the thing too. I was a behind the scenes guy. Yeah. Nobody knew my face. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? And that was cool with me. I yeah. wasn't out there for that kind of glory. I was having fun playing music. So your research, right? When this come out, I need you to give me all the songs that you, you know, you know, you played on, oh, so yeah. I can put them in, in in the list and pop it up on the screen so that everybody know what's going on, what I record it was. That. I can do that. So Chicago is known for its myths and beasts, brother. What what Chicago based house beef or myth do you want to squash or correct, past or present? Well, that one I just spoke on earlier, one. Well, that's the one with Keith Nunley and Steve Hurley? Uh, no, no. The myth that uh, 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 house music is called house because, Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's it was made in that's, the house. Yeah, that's the, uh, who, you know, who came, which that came first, kinda, the chicken or the egg. It kind of yeah. gets under my skin sometimes. Yeah. I mean, I was kind of there. I, I ain't saying I'm right. Right. But I will say I just don't agree. So did you, uh, since you was 80, coming out of 82, did you ever get a chance to go to the warehouse power plant? I went to all those places. Okay. And I actually, you know, hung out. I, went, I remember going down one time and just sitting in the in the DJ booth with, uh, um, oh, come on now, my mind is skip, uh, skipping. Uh, at the warehouse? No, no, at uh, the underground. Under, uh, um, the music box. Music box. Uh, Ron Hart. Ron. Yeah, yeah. Me and Ron sat there the whole night. Right. And I just sat in the booth because I just used to like to listen to see what made people move. Yeah. He was playing my tracks. And right. I'm just sitting there, me and him rapping. Right. And I'll never forget that night. That was a memorable night for me because here I am hanging out with Ron Hardy, somebody I've been right. looking up to and all that. Yeah, and yeah, I'm yeah. sitting here in the booth with him and we rapping. That was cool. Okay. I got to meet Larry LeVan in New York. Nice. Uh, went to the uh, garage. Right. Uh, right. That's garage, right. Yeah. And, and, and sat there. While Larry LeVan did his set, and while right. I was there, Timmy Registrar comes in, and I was in awe because this is the guy who did the, the Colonel Abrams stuff yeah. that I've been idolizing. Right, 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 so right. So I got to meet uh, Timmy Registrar. Nice. And it was just it was, it was was just an awesome thing. But as far as squashing something, 
Um, I don't know, man. I'm not holding no grudges against nobody. Okay, that's good. Bro. And the, but the thing is, you know, uh, we were young. Right. We got taken advantage. I'm just gonna put it oh, out absolutely. there. Absolutely, we got taken advantage of. Yes, sir. We didn't know any better. But the right. business should have been handled a yeah. little better. So any regrets I got, that's the one thing I do regret okay. that I didn't handle the business right. better back then. Okay. So in, in, in up, coming up in the future, man, you got anything coming out right now, brother? Nothing right now. But let me say this. Yes. I got plans too. Okay. 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 Uh. I got disheartened by being cheated so much. Absolutely. And that kind of made me decide instead of making, and it's still in me. I got hit records in me. Don't, okay. don't think I don't. All right, Danny. Nobody don't believe right. that, okay? <laughs> but the thing is, I made a conscious decision yeah. to not make anybody else some more money if I can't get any hey, money. Brother, I so I'd rather just not do it. Yeah. Instead of, yeah, you, you know, had, instead you, of you, making somebody else You had a bitter taste rich. in your mouth of it, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. But now, since the industry has changed and the way music is put out now yeah. has changed, right. I think I'm going to put my hat in the, in the game, in the arena, and, I see, think you should, brother. and see what I can make happen. Because now I, I you think can you do it yourself, right. get a distributor, and I'm going to think get things set up so I can I think the culture needs Danny D back in the game, brother. Hey. So, I mean, if you okay. if you create a hit before, you can create another one, man. Oh, yes. Yeah, I'm a musician. Absolutely. And I can do them in my sleep. People okay. don't realize it. And, and the thing is... When they were stealing from me, right. they don't know I can get more. I can keep making more. Right. How many can you steal, though? Yeah. Really just, I kind of don't even want to focus on the past anymore. No, I get it. But it'll, you know what? One thing, I I, I get that, Danny. But mm. you got to understand, man, that's part of your history. True. So if you don't talk about people, are not going to know about it. True. So that's why we do this. So people understand that you have a, a footprint in this history. Yeah. You know, so... I, you didn't get it back then. I want you to get it now so people can be like, man, Danny Wilson was was a part of this. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So that's why we do this, man. And that's cool. Yeah. And I and I love you for doing it. Yeah. Thing is, I want to make some new history as well. There you go. You know, so I would love to get on the track with you as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. And let's do it. Let's man. do it, brother. All right, cool. <laughs> so I just want to, man, thank you for being on the show, brother. Yes, sir. I appreciate this. Like I said, I, I wanted you to give and give you your flowers while you stay here. Okay. Um, once again, everybody click the button, subscribe, and uh, hit that notification button. And uh, Danny, any last words, brother? Hey, keep housing. That's all I can say. That's it, brother. <laughs> all right, y'all. We love everything. Thank you for tuning in for everything in house music and more, y'all. Peace. All right.